Mates, good afternoon. How are we all doing? It is Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. I'm over at the Oscar Scherer State Park once again. And a little toasty right now. The humidity has finally went up a little bit. Thus, with humidity means that there is a higher dew point in terms of temperature. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what dew point means, basically, so say for example, you're in a subtropical climate and the dew point is, I don't know, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically what that means is at any time that the temperature goes below 72 degrees Fahrenheit means that you will start to see dew. But anytime it's above 72, the moisture stays in the air. And that also brings up the term of relative humidity. So that, that's really the bottom line. The higher dew point means that there will be a bit of a higher humidity. Now if there's a lower dew point, that means the humidity is also lower. So typically when the ambient temperature matches the dew point temperature, that means the humidity is 100%. And that is where you will start to see water itself. But aside from that, I wanted to actually point out this particular plant right here. I'm sure many of you Floridians have actually seen this particular plant. But for those of you who are not as familiar, this is actually something called an Eastern Prickly Pear. You could say that the plant definitely grew a pear. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. Now, with that being said, these are indeed a native flower found in Florida. And they're actually... Yeah, they are indeed a type of cactus. So, in other words, they are a succulent. So you can tell, like, based on the texture on the outside, it has more of a smooth, yet also kind of like a waterproof structure. Now, another great example of a succulent that I'm sure many of you have heard of is aloe itself, which is how we make aloe vera. With the prickly pear cactus, what they typically do in its early cycle, they produce these yellow flowers. And as you can see, these flowers contain traces of pollen on the anthers here. Now, when I say anthers, I'm basically referring to all these little, like, how do you want to put it? All these little stems. I can't think of a better word to use. But that all has pollen. So, I posted an article yesterday where I was talking a bit about insects. And how, for instance... I was mentioning how insects really act as one of our most important pollinators in the natural world. They essentially make up the heart of our food chain. So like, I'm sure you saw some beetles on there, maybe even some bees in addition. And every now and then you may even see ants too. But the point is, without insects, there would be an ecological collapse. Because insects really act as our major pollinators. You know, even caterpillars are considered to be a type of insect. Now, they are what keep the world going you know, in terms of our natural food production. 
But what's fascinating about the prickly pear cactus is they actually produce these red berries right there. Hence the pears. That's how it really gets its name. And the neat thing is they actually are indeed edible. You can eat them as long as you remove the spines, which are the sharp points. Now, that's the thing about cactus, is they still have their sharp points. But I have read before that sometimes drinking water directly from a cactus is actually not advised, as there can be contaminants in the water from a cactus, so you, you have to basically treat it before you drink it because it can be can be poisonous in a sense so keep that in mind now a neat thing about this plant is it actually has a wide distribution throughout the east coast of the united states it's even been found as far north as canada now several different tribes, such as that of the Seminole, for example, have used this plant to actually help with infected wounds, kind of like as an ailment, and even to help treat snake bites, too, in addition. So, it does have some wide use. But one last thing that I do want to mention about this plant is as you progress later into the spring even into the summer sometimes you'll actually find like a white material that kind of reminds you of looking at a fungus I wonder if we can perhaps see any I think it's still a little too early yet but what the neat thing is about this plant is it has this white material and it's not a fungus. Rather, it is actually a type of insect called a cochineal. And that this white material that I'm discussing has actually been used as a means of making dyes. You know, whether it be for food or even for paint. Just in general, dye has been derived from this plant. So it also serves as a commercial importance too, in addition, not just for our health. So whenever you guys stumble upon this plant, be sure to tell it thank you. And also, you know, as E.O. Wilson has put it, the insects are the, I, I can't remember exactly how he worded it, but the insects are like what keep the world going. And you can thank them too, in addition. And they'll appreciate it. It's all right, you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something of value from the video. And I'll be sure to also share an article in case if any of you want to read up a bit further on the eastern prickly pear cactus. It's all right, you guys. Take care. Enjoy your Wednesday and journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya. Take care, you guys.